So once again, welcome to a new meeting of the mastermind group. It is a pleasure having today uh, uh, Mr. Richard uh, uh, Jean. He is based in, in New South Wales, uh, Nimbin, and he's going to share with us and the audience his journey in this business. Thank you, Richard. Uh, I was born in Switzerland, um, son of a carpenter, uh, son of a German a German refugee. So, so I kind of always, uh, um, yeah, didn't quite fit in there either. Uh, I'm a, a tradesman toolmaker. I, I did a bit of aircraft engineering. Um, I built a lot of special purpose machines in my life and uh, had a job for the Fred Hollows Foundation at one stage and then did a lot of years uh, building locks for a lock company uh, in Wollongong called uh, Bylock. Um, I then uh, became a technical officer at the Civil Engineering Department at Wollongong University. Uh, where I got introduced to hemp um, by a lady called Mara Klarazewski and uh, ended up deciding to do my last five or six of working years uh, in the hemp industry. And uh, I decided to move to Nimbin uh, because somebody told me you can grow your own home. And, and um, yeah, so I'm just going to show you uh, where, where I've gone so far. So we're, we're, this, this, uh, this is my, my place, uh, it, it, that little place called uh, Stony Shoot. And uh, I grew some big, big trees this year. Uh, not a great yield on them because we had a lot of, a lot of sun problems uh, or, or rain problems, really. We had a lot of rain this year. Anyway, um, uh, we, we grew um, so far. This is my third crop as a, in, uh, my third crop as a, as a hemp farmer, kind of. Uh, but it's only my second year as a hemp license holder. And uh, currently I have four farms under my license and uh, we mostly growing for feminized seeds. Uh, and and uh, we, do, we do grow for flowers in Nimbin because we're not allowed to pollinate the area um, uh, with, with male pollen. Uh, so therefore the feminized seeds are coming into it. Um, this is the back, back view from, from our paddock uh, at the farm. Uh, unfortunately, just this week, uh, we've been told we've been evicted from our, our factory, so we have to look for a new one, uh, which is uh, going to be a little bit of a challenge. But uh, this is, uh, we had uh, two greenhouses, which are all, all being re revised at the moment, and we utilised them. I was part of a co-op called um, the Hemp, the, well, anyway, the Nimbit Hemp Co-op, and uh, we, we made balms and stuff to keep our, our co-op uh, afloat. And this was one of my first batches of farms that I made um, when I was there. We had a, a, a large police presence in Nimbin, of course, because of all the, all the hemp and ganja industry. And they, they did come and visit us at one stage uh, and, and uh, check, checked all our licenses, but they have left us alone so far. And that they've been quite cooperative on, at the Mardi Gras as well. Uh, which which is, is a good thing. Uh, inside our greenhouses, we just grew uh, some small crops. We learned how to do cloning. Uh, we, we, we had some successes, some not successful things, and uh, it's always hard to, to, to grow inside if, you, if you're not, not, a, not a good farmer as well. Uh, this is uh, one of the things we have done and we, we, we are doing, which is uh, called um, uh, weed crete. Uh, we're using uh, basically anything that you can, can find in the area, including hemp, lantana, uh, devil's fig and, and everything else, chop it up into little wood chips and, and uh, bind it together with, uh, with magnesium oxide and not lime. And uh, we, we, we're then using um, a shuttering system, same as you do with hempcrete, uh, and, and uh, that's just a sample there. Uh, we, we have a second uh, interesting thing, or this whole container that you can see there is been infilled with uh, uh, hemp and lantana. And uh, the floor is made from a thing what we call stone wood, which is basically sawdust and magnesium oxide as a binder with a bit of magnesium oxide as a colouring. And uh, the machine you can see back there is our hemp fiber fusion machine, which is basically a paper a pulp machine, which has got a big mercury uh, engine in the back. And um, it's been driven by the biodiesel. Um, we built it inside a container and then lifted the container up with a big crane so we'd be able to fit the pump underneath it. So this is a view from underneath. And uh, we, we basically feel, you can also see some panels there that we've infilled with uh, hemp or with wheat crete as well. Uh, this is us putting the machine together. 
Um, this is a big German pump, $50,000 worth coming from Germany, and it's recycling our, 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 our uh, processing uh, material uh, until the, the fibers are fine enough to, uh, to be sprayed onto, onto a thing, which I will show you in a minute. Um, this is another picture. This is just a picture of the top. So, so it's got a big holding tank and it resizes back into it once it's been gone through the grinder. And my talk, can you guys hear me all right? Um, okay, so this is this is uh, the machine we built there too. So, um, um, and and uh, yeah, everything was built uh, by local local people. Uh, some of my friends uh, and 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 um, um, local industries. Uh, this is also the, the back view of the container, and you can see uh, some hemp uh, crete panels oh, on from the bottom there. Um, uh, most testing, of the stuff. Testing one, two, three. Testing, testing one, two, three. Testing, testing one, two, three. Can you can you guys hear me? Yeah, hear you. I hear you. Okay, you hear okay so it's alright. Yeah. Okay, so this this basically most it's of the amazing. stuff we've done was on a lot on a small. Ah, yeah, it seems to have joined it. Uh, just a moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Ron, can you help us to mute your your can you help us to mute your... Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Richard, please proceed. Okay, no worries. So, so this is we, we basically most of our stuff we've done in the small, in the small mixer. Uh, you, you can get bigger mixers, uh, but we found the paddle mixers most work most uh, uh, efficiently at this stage, but I'm hoping to get some big trough mixers at one stage that we can use to, to do on a larger scale because we're only doing prototypes. Uh, this is basically a trial of our uh, one of our SIP panels, uh, which we're doing uh, layering. And uh, this is actually probably the wrong picture, but this is the, the, the top side of it. This you put a, small, a fine layer of uh, magnesium oxide and sawdust in the bottom, uh, then uh, an infill layer or whatever we, we find we prefer will be hemp, and then a top layer of magnesium oxide and sand, uh, which we went we up with a panel uh, like this, uh, which has one side uh, is fireproof. And the other side is quite soft uh, with, with the, the, the wood chips on, on the inside. Uh, we tried, uh, we, we tried uh, uh, in reinform reinforcing um, stuff as well. And we're also making uh, some molds for tabletops. So we're just uh, uh, doing, doing those trials at the moment. We're trying to laminate them uh, and uh, somebody wants some tabletops made from hemp. Um, somebody also made a little, little pizza oven as well because I magnesium mean, oxide is actually used as a, a fire, fire brick. So I magnesium mean, oxide and sand makes fire brick. So if you put a bit of oxide and sand in it, you can make it a fireproof as well. Um, now this is uh, the pulp that comes out of the machine once we put the machine together and it took us almost two years to get that process happening. But well, we have succeeded at, at, at Christmas time and we've made four batches of didgeridoo so far and a couple of other projects. But uh, this is what the pulp looks like after it's been grown. It goes into a pump. Uh, into a pump. Um, um, this is a, okay. I'll, I'll have to. <clears throat> so, sorry about my my screens not being or my, my pictures not all being in line. But this is uh, how we do make it, fill the ditch reduce. So we're using a, a bag that's sewn up a special size, and we're filling it with sand from the top, and then we we hang it upside down in into our spray booth like this one. And we've got a little steady on the bottom and, and the driving uh, part on the top. And then we're using a spray gun uh, and, and a forklift uh, to, to spray those things up in, in, uh, in situ while it's turning very, very slowly on, on, on a rotary, rotary device. Uh, all these ones are blanks. So we, we make 30 blanks at the time and then we spray them 30 times at the time. And then after they've been sprayed, they go back into the drying room. As you can see, those racks going into a drying room. And then they get uh, dehydrated, and they end up, uh, uh, um, yeah, rock solid and, and unbreakable virtually. Uh, so this is a spray uh, application. The didgeridoos uh, have to be sprayed very thick because uh, it's got eighty percent of water uh, as part of our fiber fiber processing thing, which I probably have to explain a little bit better. The, the fiber processing basically works by grinding clean fiber in this grinding machine that we have into a pulp. Uh, 
and then you you can spray it or you can form it uh, by hand or or, or, or anything or, or with a press uh, with with heater plates and 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 once you get the water back out of it it turns into really really solid material and uh, you can machine it, it it machines nicely it's it's almost unbreakable really if you make it wrong but it has got limitations uh, of, of it of what we can do with it but i'd have to explain that a little bit in a, a different occasion anyway uh, this is this is a, we can also do multi-colors of course and this is a, a we're doing workshops where people use the same material to make balls and and bowls and 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 little gancha containers and all that sort of stuff uh to 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 yeah just to to have a bit of fun it's like play-doh but it's got a very very big shrinkage rate so it's very difficult uh to to, to sometimes to deal with it uh, there are certain applications you'll be good for certain applications you won't be good for and uh, this is just a bit of a sample of thing now uh, back to my farming farming experience we had a lot of problems uh, in the first year with with uh, a drought and and fires and and everything and um and then he drained for three weeks and he drowned all our plants and that's what some of the plants look like so um I'm, I'm just telling you about a couple of, of ideas that I come up with and I did. Uh, so we, we ended up doing some something called what I call hedging, hedging our beds because we, we wanted to make up for some of our losses and we started growing some hedges. Uh, that worked quite well, but we had to go through them and uh, pull out all the males out because we weren't allowed to pollinate the neighborhood in Nimbin because the neighbors get very upset if, if uh, low THC hemp gets mixed up with the high THC uh, ganja plants. So uh, we, we, we did quite well out of that. We ended up being lucky enough for somebody to turn up who wanted to buy a half of our crop in a freezer. And we ended up uh, harvesting straight into freezers uh, and uh, uh, seeds and all, and that's being used for pet foods and pet biscuits. Um, uh, harvesting is, is, has been a challenge, I guess, because we did most of it by hand. Uh, and, but we also built, or my, my partner Dan here on the right hand side, he, he's a very clever builder. He's he done all that all that stuff in the background, which is a little drummel and a little wood chipper. And uh, you can also see the the, the, the impromptu drying room we, we made up as well. Uh, we learned how to make clones on a larger scale, and then we got into the the, the biocharring at the same time as well. Um, also, we chopped up tree root, I mean true roots and stuff, and and we did grow a fair bit of seeds as well for our next crops as well. Um, but most of it, uh, the for, for earlier experience, were basically just small. It was almost like ganja growing, really, uh, but with hemp uh, and, and low THC hemp. Uh, I did find a, a young partner who found a farmer who wanted to do a hemp uh, a trial on, on a large scale. And this is where Grow My Own Home uh, comes into it. Uh, you can actually uh, get a farmer to grow, to grow your hemp for you for about $3,300 per hectare. That's what the guy charges me here. And we ended up having a, um, a, a crop, unfortunately, with a, a, the wrong seed rate. And uh, we seeded uh, four kilograms or five kilograms per hectare rather than 25. And we ended up getting trees rather than uh, a, a little, little uh, a single plants. And we were forced to harvest the thing early. Um, but we also did some trials while we, we did it because I'm, I'm working with a guy who develops fer organic fertilizers and we used an agri drone to, to uh, fertilize our crops and that seemed to work quite all right at, at, at the reasonable rate and uh, it, it's quite an amazing little bit of technology uh, that you can put 18 liters of payload and uh, she knows exactly uh, how much she spays out and uh, she also uh, it's good for for uh, insect uh, controls as well because it it, it uh, uh, wobbles the leaves uh, and 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 it gets spread quite quite evenly and we're using biological warfare on 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 little critters as well so which is um, something else I'm learning about uh, doesn't look too healthy from here but we had some 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 quite amazing things that ended up giving us 15 bales uh, which should be enough uh, to to grow a house or two. Unfortunately, this particular bales went to Tasmania to build a house in Tasmania, not in Nimbin. I'm not too sure why that happened. Uh, one of our good, good customers, the Church of Ubuntu in Newcastle, uh, helping a lot of people, and uh, their aim is to basically get the hemp into the food industry and prove that it's a, it's, it's a necessity for people to eat hemp on a daily basis. Um, <coughs> chipping machines, we need, we need some, some new technology. There's a company in Wollongong uh, that I used to work with uh, called Breadwood Engineering. I had a look at one of their 
uh, twin shaft uh, uh, shredders, which probably would do the trick, and it, it, but it unfortunately cost $80,000 just for one of those little things here. Um, and uh, at the moment, we're just uh, using a little mass port cheaper to chip all over the stuff. And you can see we can't go a large scale or going, going in, in this way. Uh, but we're doing trials with biochar. And, and uh, I've actually made a, a set of biochar, sent it on to a company in Melbourne who ended up making this little hemp battery uh, for us. And apparently, um, the, the, the performance is, quite, is, is very, very good, surprisingly good. And, and I, I'm still waiting for the prototype to turn up. But uh, we we um, yeah, we're hoping to to, to make that a reality. Um, but at the moment, we're just using just uh, inadequate machines. But another thing I've I've been told that the very early on in my my hemp career that hemp and mushrooms uh, go really well together. So I did my first trial of inoculating my my place uh, with mushrooms and hemp uh, chips, and uh, you can see uh, this is my first first uh, positive result. Uh, that's a butcher's knife on the right hand side uh, so uh, red wine tops uh, these ones they're all edible mushrooms and uh, you should be able to grow them on, on hemp herd uh, quite easily so if got, somebody got too much of it uh, the mushroom industry should, should, should look into that for sure uh, also hemp straw uh, hemp and mushrooms in general uh, will be something that will go really well together uh, to avoid uh, having all that sort of stuff having to go into people that's my uncle's uh, uh, breakfast and, and lunch uh, so we should should have have the older people eating a lot more hemp. That's what I, I believe. And also, uh, giant pumpkins and and um, syntropic gardens. So I'm, I'm, my dream is that people are in, involve hemp in syntropics and syntropic gardening. And, and I'm I'm setting up a little little farm at my place, or little just a hobby thing, really hobby garden. Uh, we'll be including uh, uh, fruit trees, hemp, and mushrooms. Um, We've, we did a, a large a crop uh, in, in Eureka. Uh, it wasn't under my license, but I started the farm off two years ago. And uh, we harvested 900 kilograms of, uh, of flowers and seeds this, this, this year, which was a quite a large amount to, to, uh, to store and, and to process at the same time. A fair bit of stress involved with that. Uh, some of the future stuff that I want to do is uh, encourage people to smoke uh, CBD uh, hemp uh, rather than, than uh, THC ganja because it's a lot more better for your productivity and uh, we can actually grow some really nice strains so they look, look and smell the same but just don't have the psychoactive stuff in it. Um, as you can see they, they, they look beautiful. Um, we're also doing um, trials with fertilizers um, and this is a sample of, of on the left hand side, no fertilizers on the right hand side of the stuff we're trying. And it seems to be working very well, uh, looking at my plants in the garden. Also intelligent water, uh, intelligent water is a very important part. I think you can increase your yield almost a third if you're using the right intelligent water rather than dead water from a dam. And I could explain that in detail. Uh, a hemp, uh, I use, I'm using hemp uh, and hemp seeds to catch my mice. Uh, this is a, unfortunately a trap made in China, but I think we can make that in, in Australia one of these days. I, I caught 16 uh, mice, I think, in, in three days. Um, and I just fed, the, fed them uh, hemp seeds first, got them addicted to hemp seeds, and they love them. And then they ran into there and just fell down into the water afterwards. Poor buggers. Um, and we're making hemp schnapps. As so well, I've made a batch of hemp hash for the first time this year. It's not fully legal, but I think it's it's a it's a great process uh, water extraction of of of, of dry combs, and and I can use my seeds afterwards as well, and uh, I can make make uh, some some good alcohol with it, and we can use that afterwards for extraction methods as well. So once once they let it all do legally, I suppose it, the, the technology is there and the ideas are there. Marcotting is another thing I found uh, uh, an interesting uh, thing this year. And basically you're putting this little thing onto your thing, you make two trees out of one, and then you chop off the bottom of it, and then you put it into your thing. It's been done for fruit trees for a long time, but I'm using it on hemp and just trying new things. I just like to play. Uh, like I said, I've just got a little chipper uh, and, and uh, we, we're making, um, I'm, I'm, I'm working on my own home, but uh, it's sort of been, <coughs> been a slow process. So process. Uh, we're also using using the, the stalks and the roots as, as a, a, a thing. It's a, it, it will be a future tea for people. It's like yerba mate, but better. 
uh, made from hemp and it's got got uh, uh, lots of good uh, um, uh, CBDs and CBGs and all the other stuff in it that uh, the flowers don't really have. So uh, that's that's another thing. And of course, uh, some some of our thing goes goes for for massage oils and for pet pet oils at the moment in the flower form, which uh, um, we we process into oil uh, on on the farm. Um, my son um, told me if I'd have a, ever have a hemp dispensary, he'd be working for me. He's a school teacher at the moment, but it's nice to have the young ones involved. It's kind of a dream of mine to, to have, have the kids uh, being, being making a, a living out of hemp as well. Uh, I asked my youngest son to start me a website and they, he called me up and said, Dad, sorry, mate, I made my own. So he made himself a website and this is, this is their website now. So the boys working for me or working with me uh, indirectly anyway so it's kind of my dream come true um that's my youngest son jay he's almost two meters tall and uh he's a radio announcer and he believes in him as well um and my my goddaughter uh, my, my grandchild is called eden uh, so I, I found this book and i'm actually uh, growing her making her a little garden of eden at my place where when she come and visits uh, hopefully not the distant future so um uh, thank you very much, you guys, for having me. I'll, I'll take my stop sharing my screen. Well, Richard, it uh, has been a, a pleasure listening to you as a river of wisdom. Thank you. <laughs> well, I definitely it's believe like that, that you, we are in something. Mm -hmm. And I'm very sure we will have a lot of conversations in the near future. Well, there is, there certainly, I mean, uh, from the outside, hemp has probably the most, the most growth potential uh, on the whole planet at the moment. And, and people really need it. We really need something like hemp. But I can also see how it's not that easy, you know, and, and, and it's not easy to make anything commercial and, and it takes hard work. And I'm also at the age where I also like to retire. Looks like you guys probably at the age where you should have retired too. Um, so, so, but it's nice to be able to do something that makes a difference. And I think hemp on a daily basis, I can make a small difference to somebody's life. Um, I do and, agree uh, with you, Richard. Basically, um, most people that are coming to the hemp industry, at least in Australia, are all this, one way or another, people that have been fighting against the prohibition and getting the hemp um, uh, be part of the economy. Mm -hmm. So th th that is why this, this um, group intention is to help, help each other and collaborate in a way that we can, uh, uh, you know, commercialize products that yeah. can be ben beneficial for all. This is not for one, only one single person. This is to create an yeah. industry, and an industry you really, you need yeah. all type. And, of and you need dedicated people. Yeah, yes, people yes. want to work hard. Yes. Yeah. In in Nimbin, uh, it's a bit hard to find. Uh, you know, we we also a bunch of hippies as well. But anyway, we're all trying. We're all doing our part, and I'm hoping to work with you guys some sometime in the future. And let's get some hip batteries. R Richard, hip batteries you already have the product. Thing. You already have the prototype. Mm. I, mm, mm, the task now is to get those ideas and find the proper investor yeah. that we can scale up. Yeah. To yeah. do that, we need to formulate a proper project that we yeah. can you know, uh, break down all costs or to schedule the way that we're gonna execute any potential uh, yeah. product. So that- Yeah, that there, is, there is a number of people I know of, part of my, 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 my circle of friends who, who would work really well with you guys as well. And one particular uh, uh, guy called uh, Brent Bogue in, in Melbourne, he's the one that did the, the battery. He's also doing a, a modular, modular building, building uh, project, which would be, would be great for you to, to guys to get together and talk about that. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, thank you very much. The hemp industry yeah. will not go anywhere without uh, collaboration with neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much, Richard. Thank yeah. you very no, much. No worries. I, I hope that was all self-explanatory. And if somebody has any questions or wants anything, or any, uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to talk to them and, and if people want to call yeah, them. Yeah, I don't know if Mr. Kim or Mr. Ron uh, have some questions, Mr. Peter or David, some questions at the moment. Um, Richard, where do you see the future for your process of building products going 
what 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 do you see for them? How do you see them integrating in the building industry? Look, uh, both myself and Martin are, 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 are a bit of hippie inventors, I guess, and we haven't really thought about the, the, the longer term thing. But what I would like to see going into my home um, uh, to start off with and make a prototype there. Um, I, I know, you know, it's got potential, but I, I don't know. I've got, haven't got the capacity to, 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 to think, uh, you know, big at, at this stage. I have on my own anyway, so. I can be part of a team, but we also have a company called Seal Foam, which I think you guys are aware of, who, who actually represents our ideas as well, uh, or so, some of our ideas as well. So we have got people who, who try to take to the next level. It's a company that um, hemp engineering has been chasing for years <laughs> yeah. to join forces we, yeah. because with your technology, I am very sure that we can we can blast a lot of good projects around the world. You already have the technology for- uh, it, And it should be shared, members. that's right. Yeah, no. I mean, the problem is that people try to do uh, um, patents and all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, we're getting to a point now where we really have to share things because if you don't share it, we're just going to go all down the girdle together. Um, so so um, yeah, it'd be good, be good to, to can work I, together. Can I just mention, Richard, that over here we have um, uh, person that's from CRS, he started mm. up his own company, mm. and he has uh, developed a fiberglass type of reinforcement, which yeah. can be integrated with hemp panelling as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so the beauty of it is that you can uh, run your conduits up through the actual reinforcement, not right. like you normally do with uh, concrete rebar yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Except that all we need to do is just change yeah. the fiber. I mean, there's, there's a lot of... There's a lot of ideas in, 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 in the Nimbin area. There's a lot of, lot of inventors. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of uh, partnering up with, with a person who wants to do domes. And we want to do, do, uh, do them with skins and, and, uh, and, and removable uh, forms, basically. So you just pull, pull, walk, the, walk the, the, the internal form out after, afterwards once you finish. But uh, whether we're going to use hemp uh, and hemp resin, I'm not too sure yet whether, we, whether, whether that's going to be part of the thing. Um, with that bank of projects, once again, I believe that our, the evolution of our group is to become a fundraiser mm -hmm. support or something that we can yeah. say, okay, this, this, this uh, product or this prototype can have a, a marketable, uh, it can be marketable and yeah. sold in Australia or elsewhere. So that's something that we should be cooking to make it happen as well. And that is something that we want to do. <laughs> the, big, the biggest issue we've got here in Australia at the moment is that like people are finding it difficult getting things from overseas. And so the importation of products is because of COVID, um, the manufacturing facilities over in other countries have shut down for a period of time and hence they're not uh, able to keep up with the demand. demand yeah. Just give an example. The, uh, we're talking with uh, uh, China in regards with yeah, Jeffrey, yes. uh, with particle board for from hemp from China yeah. for um, for kitchen for kitchens and things like that. Yes. And I've got cabinet makers over here that are interested in it because they cannot get their raw material or their particle boards or their MDFs from the manufacturer because they're so far behind they can't keep up. So it's an ideal time to put industrial hemp panelling into yeah. the cabinet making industry here within Western Australia and yeah. exponentially all the way throughout Australia because yeah. they can't keep up, even you know, for mica and laminates can't keep up with demand. There's so yeah. many people building at the moment. And I just <laughs> saw in your presentation, Richard, a panel that you developed yeah. uh, for the floor, that mm -hmm. would be perfect. Yeah, yeah. Now look, we've got we've, we've got a couple of. I mean, it's but it's not new technology. It's been around for a long time in Europe. It's as well that the, the magnesium oxide. Um, anyway, the, the potential is there, um, and and it just has needs people to make it happen. 